Do you feel like you don't speak enough Swedish? That you need to know more words? Then stick around. With these lessons, you'll pick up some of the most common words in just a few minutes. Now, this video is a small portion of our learning program. To get the full lessons, translations, and fluency fast study tools, click the link in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Swedish Pod 101. It's time for another class, another lesson in the Swedish language. Um, and I'm Hannah, talking to you from Sweden. Today we're going to go through some very basic uh, words, some foundations. So let's get started with the words. Hey, hello. Very basic, simple. You say hey, it works for everybody, whoever you meet. You say hey and they will probably respond with another hey back to you. Good morgon. Good morning. Bit more formal. Nice and polite for the mornings. Means the same as in English. Means good morning. Good eftermiddag. Good afternoon. Same, polite and nice, but of course used in the afternoon. And again, it's the same meaning as in English. It means good afternoon. Good eftermiddag. Good afternoon. Good night. Good night. Most of the time it's used for when you're going to sleep. So um, yeah, when you wish someone a nice night, um, good night's sleep, this is what you say. Vad heter du? What's your name? Very easy, we're not that formal in Sweden. So uh, and again, it's the same meaning word by word. Uh, it means what's your name? You ask what someone is called. Jag heter Hanna. I'm Hanna. Meaning is just, my name is Hanna, and uh, I do of course recommend you to not say Hanna, but use your own name instead. It might get a bit weird if you just copy my name. Unless your name is Hanna, of course. Trevligt att träffas. Nice to meet you. Same meaning as in English, again. Um, always, you can use this when you meet someone like when you introduce yourself, but you can also use it when you say goodbye and you want to tell them that it was nice getting to know them, nice meeting them first time or every time. So it doesn't, there's no wrong time for using this one when you want to tell someone that it was nice seeing them. Hur mår du? How are you? Nice and easy short phrase. Um, Sometimes in Sweden we do respond like, oh, you know, it's all good, even though it's not. And uh, sometimes if you know someone closer, they probably give you a more thorough explanation, tell them a bit more about what's going on in their life. So this can either be just a polite phrase or when you sincerely mean to, you know, find out more about what's going on in someone's life. Jag mår bra, tack. Och du? I'm fine, thanks. And you? Yeah, so maybe this is the polite version of the answer if everything is good um, or if everything is good. So this is just the most common way to respond if someone asks you like, what's going on? It's all good. You know, I don't want to go too deep into whatever is going on in your life. But it's nice and uh, polite. And of course it ends with uh, asking someone back how they are. Snälla. Please. In Swedish we use this word snälla. It's uh, the meaning of snäll is uh, nice, kind. Um, and sometimes we have, uh, we use the word for thanks instead, like in the end of the sentence, like, can you pass me the salt, please? We say tack, thanks, instead of this word. Um, but they are you can swap them, you can use either of the two and it's still going to be a nice way of asking someone to maybe help you or, or um, answer a question or something. Tack. Thank you. Here we go with this word. Tack. Thank you. Or thanks. I would say that it's more like thanks. It's the short, nice, uh, not very formal way of just saying thanks. I think maybe this is the most useful word in any language, don't you think? Like, 
every time if someone helps you with the door or something, you can thank them. And that's uh, one of the first things for me, at least, that I want to learn how to say in the language, thank people for helping me. Varsågod. You're welcome. Maybe you help someone sometimes and they say thank you for helping them, holding a door or something. I guess in almost every country it's like the norm that you maybe, if someone is carrying a lot of stuff or someone elderly um, walks by, you hold the door for them. And in Sweden, if they say thank you, you reply with this phrase for you're welcome. So, varsågod. You're welcome. Ja. Yes. It's just yes, you know. When you want to say, you can add the yes please, ja tack. Um, but it's just yes, easy. Nej. No. Also, nej, short and easy, is just the word to say no. You can add the um, politer, uh, politer version, say no thanks, then you just say nej tack. So this is actually fun. You can combine the words in this lesson a lot to uh, create more polite sentences. Okay. Okay. So this one you kind of already knew if you know the English version. And I've heard that okay is one of the most common words in the world these days. It's uh, used in a lot of languages, almost the same pronunciation, almost the same spelling as well. So okay. That one always works. Ursäkta mig. Excuse me. For when to when you want to maybe walk by someone, someone is standing in your way, like may, maybe accidentally blocking a door or something, you just want to politely ask them if you can um, step by or if they could move to the side, then you use this one. Also, if you want to uh, get attention, you use this, uh, like, excuse me, to get some attention. Maybe in a restaurant or something like that. Förlåt. Sorry. Maybe almost as useful as knowing how to say thanks. You can say this, I'm sorry. And this is maybe more on an emotional level than the phrase for excuse me. It's a bit similar to English there too, I think, um, that you use. This is more like um, serious, maybe deep, deeper level. Maybe you hurt someone or... It doesn't have to be like that super emotional, but maybe you um, accidentally um, hurt someone. Then you say, sorry. Vad är klockan? What time is it? So in Sweden, we don't use the AM, PM, but we use the, um, you know, one, two, three, four. Then we say 13, 14, 15 hours for the afternoon time. And uh, so that's also a good thing to remember when asking about time, that maybe someone will tell you, oh, it's 14, uh, then, then they actually mean 2 p.m. So that's a good fact to, uh, to, to have when you ask for the time, so that you understand what they tell you. Var är toaletten? Where is the restroom? Good one to know you all. I, I guess you've sometimes been somewhere and you really needed a restroom. I think that's like part of being human. Um, and then asking for it in the right language can actually be crucial not to have an accident. So uh, actually, as you might, might have heard when I said it, it's quite similar to the word toilet. So uh, toilet. Uh, so you can probably use toilet and get around, but uh, it's always good to know how to ask for this. Vänta ett ögonblick. Wait a moment. Maybe in a restaurant or in a store, if you order something or buy something, they will. They just need to, you know, fix something before they can help you. Uh, then this is what they will tell you to just wait a moment, um, and hopefully it's just a moment and not longer. Hur mycket kostar det här? How much is this? So, except for getting food, um, maybe the next step, next thing you need to solve when you're traveling is to buy some things, do some shopping. Um, and then, of course, in Sweden we don't haggle, so when you ask for the price, you'll get what you're expected to pay. 
Um, there are a few exceptions to this, like a few markets where you can haggle um, and discuss the price, but most places it's just fixed. So when you ask for it, you'll get the answer you need. Can I få notan, tack? Could I get the check, please? This is for asking uh, to pay. In a restaurant, you can just raise your hand and ask for the check and you'll be able to pay. Can jag få notan, tack? Could I get the check, please? Hjälp! Help! I hope you don't have to use this one any time at all, um, because it might mean that you're in a tricky situation, but if you do end up in one, it's of course useful to <laughs> be able to scream for help. Um, quite similar to the English one. Hjälp! So just yelp and hopefully someone will run over and help you with whatever it is that you're gotten yourself into actually swedes can be a bit um maybe they won't approach you if you look like you don't need help so if you like pretend that you're okay so it's actually good to ask for it if you need it see you later this is, uh, it can either mean that you will see each other later, but you can also just use it to be nice, like, you know, hope to see you later, but you just say, see you later, as if you will actually see them. But it's kind of a nice way of saying that you uh, hope to see them later. So, uh, vi ses senare. Or, as you would usually say, actually in Swedish, you would say, vi ses sen. Sen, instead of senare. So it's, that's a shorter version. A um, bit more of slang, but you can maybe start with the the correct one. Hey, Doa. Goodbye. Um, short and easy, a version of the hey uh, that we used to say hello. Um, you add a little part in the end, and you can use this for anyone. It's also like doesn't matter if they are older or younger or anything like that. Use the same word. And this was the end of the uh, lesson, uh, top 25 phrases in Swedish. Um, I hope you uh, learned some of them already and uh, that you'll take your time to go out and practice short, easy phrases that will make you sound a bit more nice. And the Swedish people, of course, like everybody, appreciates when you um, use some of their language. Remember to like, subscribe and comment um, on uh, Swedish Pod 101, this channel, and also head over to SwedishPod101.com to learn more free Swedish. I hope you're still having fun with the language. I am. Hey då, bye bye. Hi everybody, I'm Hannah talking to you from the countryside of Sweden. Maybe you'll be able to hear some of the birds and the wind in the trees during today's class. Um, today we're going to talk about top 25 Swedish verbs. Let's get started. Att vara. To be. Jag är trött på att vara singel. Jag är trött på att vara singel. I'm tired of being single. Just guessing, but I think this is a feeling most of us had some time in our lives, unless you've been lucky enough to have a partner since, I don't know, forever. Maybe that's unlikely, so maybe you can recognize this feeling based on the verb to be. Att gilla, att tycka om, to like. Jag gillar dig. Jag tycker om dig. Jag gillar dig. Or Jag tycker om dig. I like you. Liking is a very useful verb. I mean, in this sample it's used about a person, but you can use it about anything you like. Food or places or anything. So Useful, basic verb. I hope you have a lot of things that you like um, about Sweden so that you can use these words when you come over here. Att göra. To do. Vad ska du göra i helgen? Vad ska du göra i helgen? 
What are you going to do this weekend? In Sweden now it's Tuesday, so the weekend is still... Um, we still have a few days before that, but since it's summer, I think for me I'm going to be outside a lot. That's what I'm going to do this weekend. I hope you have something fun planned as well. At säga. To say. Säg till om du är ledig imorgon. Säg till om du är ledig imorgon. Tell me if you're free tomorrow. I guess this verb to say is also a very common one. To say or to speak, you can use the same Swedish uh, verb for both of them. Um, when someone speaks, well, there is another word for that as well. But this one works for speaking, saying, talking. Att säga. Att förklara. To explain. Kan du förklara hur tvättmaskinen fungerar? Kan du förklara hur tvättmaskinen fungerar? Could you explain how the washing machine works? I don't know if you've been traveling or been around, maybe you have had to use different washing machines and at least for me I discovered that um, they can be really different. So I guess this sample se sentence might actually be more useful than you might think at first sight if you come traveling here in Sweden. Always oh, nice to get to be able to get some fresh laundry, right? <laughs> att höra. To hear. Jag hör ingenting konstigt. Jag hör ingenting konstigt. I can't hear anything strange. Do you hear anything strange? Right now I don't hear anything strange, but I heard some chickens before in this... Uh, there's a farm right next to where I'm standing, so there might be some strange animal sounds coming from over there. Att gå. To go. Vill du gå till affären nu eller senare? Vill du gå till affären nu eller senare? Do you want to go to the shop now or later? Att veta. To know. Vill du veta något intressant? Do you want to know something interesting? Of course I want to know something interesting. I don't know what people will tell you if you ask around for this, like, uh, or what you would tell them. Maybe you have your special fun fact that would be your interesting thing. Um, but I hope you have a, some kind of good story, something interesting to share. I would like to hear that story sometimes. Att ta. To take. Glöm inte att ta en bild. Glöm inte att ta en bild. Don't forget to take a picture. At least I'm not forgetting to shoot this video, I hope. I hope I'm still on. Yeah, I think I am. Don't forget to take a picture when you're traveling in Sweden because it's super beautiful. Especially by the ocean, in the forest, I would say nature, everywhere. Att se. To see. Jag ska se den nya filmen på bio ikväll. Jag ska se den nya filmen på bio ikväll. I'm going to see the new movie at the cinema tonight. In summer I don't go to the cinema that much because it's so nice outside and uh, I mean in Sweden we have daylight until very late at night. Um, in the summer, so I think for me cinema is a winter activity, but can be super nice. So sometimes in the summer I'm kind of looking forward to colder, darker days to go to the cinema, but not yet. Summer is still super nice over here. Att komma. To come. Du måste komma hem innan midnatt. Du måste komma hem innan midnatt. You have to come home before midnight. Well, if this is a rule for kids, I think midnight is quite late, but um, I guess for me to be home before midnight when I'm about to work, it's like my rule. That's like the rule I set to myself. Um, I have to be home before midnight to be able to get up and work in the morning. Um, maybe you have Midnight or some other time, like, that's your preferred time when you have to go to sleep. We're all different in our sleep cycles, I suppose. Att tänka. To think. Jag tänker på dig varje dag. Jag tänker på dig varje dag. 
I think about you every day. I'm not sure about you, like the person I'm watching through the screen right now, because I think I never met you. Mm, so it's hard to think about you every day. Um, but I do suddenly think about who's watching me on the other side right now. You or someone else. At titta. To look. Titta på den där elefanten. Titta på den där elefanten. Look at that elephant. If you come to Sweden, you will not use this word, I mean the elephant, that much because we don't really have many elephants, maybe in a zoo, but um, maybe you'll use this uh, to look uh, verb if you're lucky enough to see a moose. Because we have those and they're pretty cool as well. Not as big as elephants, but pretty cool animals. I hope you get to see one someday. At vilja. To want. Vill du gå ut med mig imorgon? Vill du gå ut med mig imorgon? Do you want to go out with me tomorrow? Wait, wait, not asking you right now because like I said, I don't know who you are um, and I'm actually busy tomorrow. Um, but maybe some other time. Maybe I'll see you some other time or you can use this for some other cool person that you meet. Att ge. To give. Glöm inte ge din mamma det här brevet. Glöm inte ge din mamma det här brevet. Don't forget to give your mom this letter. I don't know about you, but I do forget um, things sometimes. I guess it's one of the annoying things about being human, that you tend to forget things now and then, and it's really annoying. I hope you're better than me with not forgetting things. Att använda. To use. Vet du hur man använder DVD-spelaren? Vet du hur man använder DVD-spelaren? Do you know how to use the DVD player? I don't know about where you are, but in Sweden, um, DVD players are actually not that common anymore. So maybe you won't have to ask about how to use the DVD player, but how to use like a laptop or Netflix or something. Um, but it's still a good verb. Att hitta. To find. Jag hittar inte mina nycklar. Jag hittar inte mina nycklar. I can't find my keys. I think well, we, we have all been in this situation sometimes. Like for me especially, it's right when I'm about to leave the house, I'm just gonna grab the last few things, put them in my bag and go. And that's when I can't find my keys. And of course, they're usually in a very obvious place. I just have to run around um, and get really stressed and then I find them, but it's super annoying. So should probably find a better spot right by the door where I can always, uh, Leave my keys, I'll try to do that after shooting this video. <laughs> Att gå ut. To go out. Ska vi gå ut och äta på söndag? Ska vi gå ut och äta på söndag? Should we go out to eat on Sunday? Sunday is actually a quite popular day to go to restaurants in Sweden because they're not as fully booked as Fridays and Saturdays, but it's still like a weekend and a bit of a luxury. So, um, pretty good sample sentence. I don't know about the rest of the world. Maybe it's similar. Maybe Sunday is a day when a lot of people go out to eat. I'm not sure. At least here in Sweden, that's the case. Att fråga. To ask. Fråga din mamma först. Fråga din mamma först. Ask your mom first. For me these days I don't have to ask my mom that often, but sometimes I do, like for example, sometimes I still borrow, borrow um, her car and then I'll have to ask her first. I guess throughout lives we will always have these special situations to our mothers and yeah, have to ask them things, like at least opinion sometimes. Att jobba. To work. Jobbar du hela helgen? Jobbar du hela helgen? Are you working the whole weekend? I hope you're not working the whole weekend. Um, I'm usually not working uh, during the weekend. Maybe like 
little bit on Sunday if necessary, but most of the time I would not work during the week and it's uh, for pleasure, I think. Att gå in. To enter. Kan vi gå in i den här affären snabbt? Kan vi gå in i den här affären snabbt? Could we enter this shop quickly? Do you usually enter a shop quickly when you say you're supposed to? I'm actually one of the people who does, like I don't really like uh, shopping or going to shops so I try to be as fast as possible but I know that some people say this and they're not super fast. You probably have friends like that who are like just gonna check something out in a shop and then they take like one hour. Maybe that's you, maybe it's someone you know. Att känna. To feel. Jag känner mig trött idag. Jag känner mig trött idag. I feel tired today. But I actually don't. I feel like I have a lot of energy being out here in the countryside. It's so beautiful, so I have a lot of energy. But some days I feel tired, you feel tired, I guess we all feel tired. Hope you're feeling very alert learning all the Swedish today though. Att lämna. To leave. Jag har lämnat min man. Jag har lämnat min man. I have left my husband. I haven't, but um, and I don't have one either. But maybe this is um, something you hear in movies a lot. I think I feel like I feel like I heard this in movies a lot. I don't know. Um, but there are a lot of things you can leave, like your house or the train station or a cafe or whatever. Useful verb. Um, Everywhere we go, we sooner or later have to leave, I guess. Att ringa. To call. Jag ringer upp dig snart. Jag ringer upp dig snart. I'll call you back soon. Call. I heard that calling people is like less common these days because we do a lot of texting and writing. Um, but uh, to get like faster to a de decision or something. I think it's always nicer to call and uh, get a regular conversation instead of just writing back and forth. So, um, att ringa, to call, useful. Att springa, to run. David springer snabbare än mig. David springer snabbare än mig. David runs faster than me. I was actually out running this morning in the beautiful uh, surroundings here, um, but I don't know who David is, it's just a sample name in this case, but I didn't run super fast, so maybe, probably someone called David is a little bit faster than me. That, my friends, was the end of this lesson, top 25 Swedish verbs. I hope you found uh, some of them, all of them, most of them useful. Verbs are things we do, like active usually. And uh, what are you doing today? What verb? Maybe you can use one of these Swedish verbs to um, talk about something you're up to today. Remember to like, comment and subscribe to this video and head over to SwedishPod101.com to learn more Swedish. I'll see you next time. Bye bye from Sweden. Hey. Hey. Jag heter James. Vad heter du? Jag heter Anders. Kul att träffas. Ja, kul att träffas. Det är fest ikväll här, eller? Ja, just det. Vi ses på festen. Ja, absolut. Hej James, hur är det? Bra, tack. James, varifrån kommer du? Jag kommer från England och varifrån i Sverige kommer du? Jag kommer från Linköping. Var i Göteborg bor du? Jag bor i Kalbäck och du? Jag bor i stan nära till universitetet. Jag bor i en tvåa med min tjej. Hur bor du? Jag bor på hotell just nu. Ursäkta Anders, men jag måste till bussen nu. Okej, okay, vi ses. Hej då. Vi ses. Du, idag flyttar Nils och Eva in i lägenheten. Jaha, vad trevligt. Varifrån kommer de? Eva är från Polen och Nils är från Sverige. Jaha, vad intressant. Du James, kan du hjälpa Nils och Eva senare med att hitta här i huset? Tack. Självklart.
När kommer de? De kommer på eftermiddagen. Jag måste verkligen gå nu. Hej då. Hej då. Vi ses. Hej, jag heter Eva och kommer från Polen. Vad heter du? Mitt namn är James. Jag är engelsman och du är polack. Ursäkta, men vad betyder det? På svenska säger man polack till folk från Polen. Och till mig från England, engelsman. Jasså, det visste jag inte. Så jag är polack. Och till folk från Sverige, vad säger man då? De kallas för svenskor. Jaha, jag hoppas jag får träffa många av dem snart. Hej James, du spelar bra. Tack Anders. Många här spelar bra, men jag förstår inte alla språk. Ja så, hur så? De där pratar franska. De talar ingen svenska och mycket lite engelska. Jaha, vad kul. Så många språk. Själv studerar jag spanska och japanska. Oj, vad intressant. Då talar du många språk. Nej, inte än. Min spanska är okej, okay, men min japanska är fortfarande svag. Som min svenska. Nej, det talar ju nästan flytande. Hi everybody, welcome to Swedish Pod 101. I'm Hanna. I'm talking to you today from Sweden. It's a beautiful spring morning here. So today we're going to talk about 10 phrases you always want to hear. A few nice ones to remember that will probably make you happy if you hear them and that you can use to make someone else happy as well. Du ser bra ut idag. You look great today. Du ser bra ut idag. You look great today. Such a short and easy one, but I believe this is something you can tell anyone and it will always make them happy. So, good one to remember. Jag saknar dig. I miss you. Jag saknar dig. I miss you. I hope you don't get to hear this too much, because maybe that means that you're too far away from your loved ones. But, of course, when you're... When you like people, you will um, hopefully miss them too sometimes. I guess that's part of the game, don't you think? Du gjorde ett bra jobb. You did a great job. Du gjorde ett bra jobb. You did a great job. I think this one is uh, extra special actually because it's when it's about work or a school project or something, it means that you put an effort into it, like uh, maybe worked really hard. And someone tells you that you did a great job, that's, uh, I mean, maybe that's even more worth than uh, money, that someone is really happy about what you did. So, use this one. Det kommer en bonus i slutet av månaden. There'll be a bonus at the end of the month. Det kommer en bonus i slutet av månaden. There'll be a bonus at the end of the month. Well, this one means that you did an extra good job, I think, if someone is willing to to give you a bonus um, or if that you worked hard enough to earn that well-deserved bonus. So good on you if you hear this. Du är en utmärkt kock. You're an excellent cook. Du är en utmärkt kock. You're an excellent cook. Well, personally, I'm not that into cooking, so honestly, I'm not sure if I get to hear this too much. Um, but if you like cooking, I hope You get to hear this from people trying out your food, I'm sure you do. Och du vinner. And you win. Och du vinner. And you win. I hope that um, you sometimes win, um, but maybe not all the time, because maybe that would make people around you angry. So uh, I hope you uh, win now and then, and that you enjoy it when you do. Du hade rätt. You were right. Du hade rätt. You were right. Again, like, uh, it's always nice to be right, I think. Uh, if you weren't sure about something and you look it up and you find out that you were right. But um, I hope this is not part of like an argument where someone is angry at you for being right. So sometimes I think it's more important to agree to disagree to. But I'm sure you you got this. Jag tog med något speciellt till dig. I brought you something special. Jag tog med något speciellt till dig. I brought you something special. Maybe if uh, someone you know, like a loved one in the family, has been away traveling and bring you home something special, I know that's something I really appreciate when people do. 
Budgeten är obegränsad. The budget is unlimited. Budgeten är obegränsad. The budget is unlimited. Well, this is nice in when you're gonna work on a project or something that you can um, put everything into it that you want. So I hope you get to hear this sometimes. Jag är så stolt över dig. I'm so proud of you. Jag är så stolt över dig. I'm so proud of you. Maybe this is my favorite on the list that someone to hear that someone is really proud of me. Um, it, it's, it's something extra. That's it for today. Ten phrases you always want to hear. Maybe you heard one of them today already. Uh, maybe you have a favorite that you like to hear or that you like to tell people. Um, I hope you get to hear them now and then and that you use them that would make people happy and uh, yeah. So remember to like, comment and subscribe to the channel and head over to SwedishPod101.com to learn more. Thank you so much. I look forward to next time. Bye bye. You are at a train station where you're attempting to buy an express ticket from a ticket machine. Which option should you choose to buy an express ticket? Which option should you choose to buy an express ticket? The option on the bottom left is for an express ticket. Express billet. You are at a train station where you've just bought an express ticket. Which train car row and seat number are you in? Which train car row and seat number are you in? The ticket says that you're in train car number one in the eighth row in seat C. Tågvagn nummer ett, åttonde raden, plats C. You are at a train station where you're reading the train schedule for an express ticket that you've just bought. On which days are there no express trains running? On which days are there no express trains running? There are no express trains running on public holidays and the third Sunday of every month. Nationella helgdagar, tredje söndagen varje månad. Are you feeling confident as a beginner level language learner? Are you ready to move up to the intermediate level? Here are some tips to help you make that leap and advance your language learning progress. Tip number one, determine your skill level. It's important to look across your skills in the major language competencies, listening, speaking, writing, and reading. By taking our level assessment test, you can review your skills in each competency and see your strengths and weaknesses. 
Keep in mind, it's normal to be better in some skills than others. Premium Plus users can take our level assessment test and get personalized recommendations and learning pathways based on your results. Once you've figured out which skills need work, it's time to take action. No matter which of your language skills need to be improved, make sure you choose a method that's both effective and fun to help maintain your regular learning routine. Tip number two, listening. The most effective way to build your listening comprehension is by building a strong vocabulary. The more vocab you master, the easier it will be to understand the context and details of the conversation. Songs in the target language are a key listening tool that will teach you common, everyday vocabulary. By learning and memorizing the lyrics, you're building up your vocabulary. If you really want your listening skills to take off, listen to our podcasts. We have hundreds of hours of audio lessons for you to listen to. Before you know it, you'll be able to understand shows and movies. Tip number three, speaking. Add speaking elements to your language routine. Try shadowing podcasts, repeating along while you listen. Match the native speaker's pronunciation and intonation. This is a fantastic way to improve your fluency and accuracy. You can also find a partner for conversation exchange. A partner can help correct your mistakes and teach you more natural ways to phrase your ideas. Tip number four, writing. An easy way to start writing more often is by keeping a one sentence journal. Write one sentence in a journal every day. It doesn't take a lot of time and is a great habit for beginners to build a routine. You have to be consistent to make improvements. Ask native speakers to correct your writing to improve even faster. You can submit sentences and phrases to your teacher using Premium Plus. Tip number five, reading. Reading is a skill you can improve by yourself. There's no need to rush. It doesn't matter if you read one or 100 pages at a time. What matters is that you understand what you read. Write down new words as you read them to practice later. If there's an audio version, read along with the narrator. It'll help you read at a slightly faster speed than normal. You can use the audio that comes with each of our lessons. Bonus tip, never give up. Where do your language skills currently stand? Where do you want them to be? How do you get there? Whatever your goal is, make it clear and part of your life. You'll reach it if you stay focused and positive. And if you really want your skills to take off, make use of our tools and resources. They're designed to help you get to the next level in the fastest, easiest, and most fun way. Just click the link in the description to sign up for a free lifetime account. Sign up takes less than 30 seconds. Click the link in the description and start learning right away. I'll see you there. Bye. You are on a platform at a train station where you're waiting for your train. Suddenly, a message appears on the display. What does the message on the display mean? What does the message on the display mean? The display reads, the next train will not stop. Nästa tåg stannar ej. You are at a train station where you're looking for the best exit to catch a taxi. Which exit should you take to get to the taxi rank? Which exit should you take to get to the taxi rank? You should take the east exit in order to get to the taxi rank. Östra utgången. 
When learning a new language, we sometimes have a hard time with things like procrastination, discouragement, or failure. But don't panic. With a good strategy, you'll be able to overcome these difficulties. Are you ready to discover the four habits of successful learners? Number one, optimize your time. When learning a language, it's important to dedicate time to your studies regularly, even if sometimes it's difficult. You're busy with school, work, family, or friends, but you can spread out your learning throughout the day. Study whenever you have small gaps of time in your busy schedule. This can be when you're on the metro, on your lunch break, or while you're exercising. Our podcast learning format fits perfectly into your tight schedule. Number two, consistency with your chosen method. There are a lot of options when it comes to courses and learning materials. Switching from one method to another can confuse you and disrupt your progress. Focusing on one learning method will make a difference. Our method has been created and optimized by real teachers, so you can stick to it with confidence. Number three, use your language background. Many languages share some commonalities. You can find words that look or sound similar, or even share the same grammar structure. A little bit of language background will give you an edge while learning. Number four, study continuously. People are excited when they start learning a new language. The enthusiasm usually lasts until the first roadblock. This can lead to discouragement and procrastination. But don't burn yourself out. Learning a language is a marathon, not a sprint. Don't try to learn it all at once. Break things down into more digestible chunks. Learning step-by-step step might feel slow, but it's an efficient way to learn a language. With patience, motivation, and good resources, you'll master the language. Remember, you can't learn a language overnight, but with motivation and these daily lessons, you'll be on the road to fluency. En kvinna frågar ett butiksbeträde på en bokaffär något. Vilken bok vill kvinnan titta på? Ursäkta mig. Jag skulle vilja titta på en bok i den där hyllan. Vilken bok vill du ha? Den om bilar. Ett ögonblick. Den här? Ja, den är det. Varsågod. Vilken bok vill kvinnan titta på? En kvinna frågar ett butiksbeträde på en bokaffär något. Vilken bok vill kvinnan titta på? Ursäkta mig, jag skulle vilja titta på en bok i den där hyllan. Vilken bok vill du ha? Den om bilar. Ett ögonblick. Den här? Ja, den är det. Varsågod. En man och en kvinna tittar i en meny på en restaurang. Vad ska mannen beställa? Vad ska du beställa? Pizzan ser god ut. Jag tror jag tar en sådan. Jag åt pizza igår, så... Okej, okay, vad säger som en hamburgare då? Låter bra. Jag tar en sådan. Vad ska mannen beställa? En man och en kvinna tittar i en meny på en restaurang. Vad ska mannen beställa? Vad ska du beställa? Pizzan ser god ut. Jag tror jag tar en sådan. Jag åt pizza igår, så... Okej, okay, vad säger som en hamburgare då? Låter bra. Jag tar en sådan. En man ringer en läkarmottagning. Vilken tid behöver han vara på läkarmottagningen? Hej, hur kan jag hjälpa till? Vilken tid stänger ni idag? Vi stänger klockan sex, så var snäll och kom innan 5.30. Okej, okay, tack. Vilken tid behöver han vara på läkarmottagningen? En man ringer en läkarmottagning. Vilken tid behöver han vara på läkarmottagningen? Hej, hur kan jag hjälpa till? Vilken tid stänger ni idag? Vi stänger klockan sex, så var snäll och kom innan 5.30. Okej, okay, tack. En pojke läser sin dagbok. 
Vad var det första som pojken gjorde idag? Vädret var underbart idag. Jag åkte och simmade på eftermiddagen i poolen och jag gick på bio på kvällen. Jag pluggade också hela morgonen. Idag var en bra dag. Vad var det första som pojken gjorde idag? En pojke läser sin dagbok. Vad var det första som pojken gjorde idag? Vädret var underbart idag. Jag åkte och simmade på eftermiddagen i poolen och jag gick på bio på kvällen. Jag pluggade också hela morgonen. Idag var en bra dag. En kvinna och en man tittar på ett fotografi. Vilket foto tittar de på? Det här är ett foto på det fotbollslag som din son spelar i, eller hur? Vem av dem är din son? Han. Åh, han är längst. Jajamensan, han är till och med längre än jag. Vilket foto tittar de på? En kvinna och en man tittar på ett fotografi. Vilket foto tittar de på? Det här är ett foto på det fotbollslag som din son spelar i, eller hur? Vem av dem är din son? Han. Åh, han är längst. Jajamensan, han är till och med längre än jag. Remember, here's what you can do to learn all of these words by heart. Drill these words with our space repetition flashcards, which will help cement these words into your long-term memory. Save them to the word bank, your personal vocabulary collection, where you can print out your own study sheets, or review the words with our looped vocabulary slideshow and play it until you know all of the words. So click the link in the description right now and sign up for your free lifetime account to get these lessons and study tools.